Welcome back to Weave Along with Eloise. I'm Eloise of Finchingfield. A couple of weeks ago, I asked on my community page what kinds of tablet weaving they would like to see next. Would they like to see more Nordic stuff? Would they like to see something easier or something more complicated? And about half the people who responded said they wanted to see something different and more complicated. I looked around a bit and I found something that I think will fit the bill. But then I reconsidered and I thought, you know what? I think this one's too difficult. It has 38 cards, two colors, skip hole weave, a very random meandering pattern that goes on for 182 picks. So I think I'm gonna put that off until next time. So if you don't have enough cards, this is your opportunity now to stock up, uh, place your orders or go down to your workshop and start making some so that you'll have enough to do the next project. But for this time, I found one that is very pretty very doable, a little different. It's not Norse, it's not geometric, it's Estonian. I don't have a lot of history on this particular piece because while there is information out there, it's all in Estonian. I've tried copying and pasting it into Google Translate, and if any of you have ever done that before, you'll know that Google Translate leaves a lot to be desired. And a lot of times the translations just are not right. So I've chosen a motif from an Estonian shawl that was found in a grave dig. It's called the Siksala shawl. It was found in grave number 200. The shawl dates to the 13th or 14th century and can be found at the Tallinn University Institute of History Archaeological Collection. The identifying number is AI5100 if you want to go look for it yourself. The tablet weaving is about one centimeter in width, which is about three eighths of an inch and is also woven in the two hole or skip hole technique. There are more than a dozen different motifs on this particular band. And it seemed like the weaver did a couple of the same motifs and then moved on to another one and did that two or three times and then moved on to another one. So it's kind of got a big collection of different motifs all around the edge. We're only gonna be doing one and it's mirror image. Amazingly, this particular piece of tablet weaving is almost complete. There's a few you know, chunks missing here and there, but it is largely complete whereas the shawl part in the interior is almost completely corroded away. So when it lays out on the table, as you can see from this image here, you can see the, the band all the way around the edges and nothing in the middle. It also has some really cool looking beads. I think they're copper, I'm not sure. But the way that they're turning kind of green around the edges makes me think that they might be copper. And it's really beautiful. As I was digging around looking for images for things that I wanted to weave, I came across this image and I just absolutely fell in love with it. And it didn't have any credit to it. If you take a picture from anybody else's work, always, always credit the owner, please. It makes it so much easier to research too. But I continued to dig around and I reached out to a couple of other tablet weavers who also did a little digging. And eventually we found the source of those images. And once again, I'm stalking Mervy Passanen. She's just amazing though. Who wouldn't want to follow her around? So of course I will provide a link for her blog. Apparently she was taking a class with uh, Mikey Curisto on doing these particular motifs and they did a whole bunch of them. And But I'm just gonna do the one. So the next kingdom in our Laurel Kingdoms project is the Kingdom of Atlantia. It was created in 1981 and its borders encompass Maryland, Virginia, the Carolinas, Augusta, Georgia, and Washington DC and their colors are blue and white. Given the oceanic theme of this kingdom, it seems only fitting that I would use a snail-like motif for this particular weave. So for this particular piece, you will need 16 cards and either two or three colors. So let's grab our looms and get started. All right, we are ready to go. Now I've done my pattern in yellow and green with a red border. The original I was looking at was in those colors and it was easiest for my brain just to copy what was on the screen and to the pattern generator. Um, but I'm going to be using white and blue. So I'm gonna do a blue border. The yellow will be the white color and the green will be the blue color, if that makes sense. So starting with blue, I'm going to leave about a four or five inch tail and pinch it down on the forward peg. So I'm gonna start going over the top peg all the way to the back and then zigzagging around the pegs I'll go around the heddle peg and skip over this kind of auxiliary peg behind it 
for now. And all the way to the back peg, the lower back peg, and zigzagging around. There's a peg down below and a peg up high. So you go around the bottom one first, then the tension peg, and then the forward peg. Put the scissors over there. If I put them down on the table, they make a loud noise. Following that same path, none of the threads will cross over each other, which is good because that'll create problems later as you try to shift. If you're wondering about Smokey, yeah, he's in the next room. He's very lonely right now. My daughter, who is actually the owner of Smokey, um, is off at work, and so he's feeling particularly lonely, especially since he can hear me talking out here, and he wants to come out and play, but yeah, that's, that's not gonna happen right now. So you may hear him in the background squawking. All right, four threads, four holes in the card. We have the top of the card facing me, or facing to the right. And this is an S-threaded, so the threads will go through the back side of the card, or the left side of the card. And since all four are the same color, it doesn't matter where you start. Every hole gets a thread. And once those are all pulled through, make sure that everything is taut all the way through. It's not caught on anything. I have a little stabilizing foot back here and sometimes the threads get tangled up around that. Surgeon's knot twice around. And then once around, left over right first, and then right over left. And once again, again, we have a nice long tail, following the same path as before. It is now November 14th, 15th? I've lost track. It's Sunday. The uh, weather is getting cloudy and rainy, as it always does this time of year. Cooling down. I wasn't sure if I was ready to do filming today, and I remembered that um, we're getting our roof redone in the next few days, so... getting our roof done in the next few days so it's going to be significantly louder in the house and there's no way I'll be able to do any filming so today is the day and then tomorrow I'll be able to do all the editing and possibly on Tuesday I'll have it ready for posting alrighty we've got all four threads done card number two is Z threaded which goes through the front of the card. Again, all four threads are the same color, so every hole gets a thread. Oh my gosh. Right over left and under twice, left over right 
and under once. Tie it up. Now that thread will not come undone. I suppose if you're using synthetic threads, you know, some polyester, slippery kind of stuff, it might untie, but I've not had any problems with cotton or even silk coming untied. Okay, so for the next 12 cards, it is all two colors each. So we'll have one white thread and one blue thread for the entire pattern. I like to do them both at the same time. Take your two threads, leave a nice long tail, pinch it down at the forward peg, then put keeping your finger between the two threads wrap them around each peg following the same path. What is this? Oh, it's a sticker. Ugh. Making all that noise. What is that? It's a sticker. Just the, uh, the label on the spool of thread. All right, what am I doing? Card number three is Z-threaded. So again, we're going to go through the front of the card. Card three, hole A, is white. And then opposite, in the diagonal corner, which would be C, is blue. A blue C. Hmm, that makes sense. Twice around and once in your surgeon's knot. And scoot all the threads back. So what else has been going on? Oh, I taught a class yesterday. It was an online Zoom class on tablet weaving. Big surprise. Um, I had all the technology problems, everything that could go wrong. I couldn't get the Zoom thing to work. It dropped me four times in a one hour period. Um, I lost sound, I lost video. I could hear them, but they couldn't hear me. Everything went wrong. It was so frustrating. But, you know, I had seven or eight people there, I think, and uh, Apparently it went over okay. All right, so card number four, B is white and D is blue. Uh, we're gonna go through the front of the card again. All these cards are Z threaded all the way across, so that's gonna make it easy. The threading will always go through the top of the card. Well, until you get to the border. Twice around, tie it in a knot.
first thing you need to do is make sure that all of your cards are in the AD position, the home position. Let's turn all the cards back to where they need to be. Oh, that one's tucked underneath that string. That one's tucked underneath that string. And they are all straightened up now. Okay, once they're all straightened up, you need to find pencil. Where's my pencil? Uh, well, here, that'll hold it for a minute. I seem to have misplaced my weaving pencil. So, a replacement weaving pencil. Yeah, that fits pretty well. All right, so now the cards aren't going to squirrel all over the place. We need to start with our loaded shuttle. This is just lightly loaded. This is the leftover piece when I ran out of my warp thread. Might as well use it up. Place it in the shed, leaving a nice long tail on one side, as you can see. Turn all the cards forward. And again, the pencil is only there to hold the cards in place while you're weaving. You want to take your tail and put it back through. Snug it up just a little bit. Turn your cards again. And turn your cards one more time. Snug up those weft threads, and then one more quarter turn, and all the cards will be back in the AD position at the top. Beat that down, pull that snug, and you'll just have a nice little row of stripes there. I'm going to take the tension off just a hair. All right. Now you start the pattern at row one, right here at the bottom. All the gray coloring in the background means the cards will turn backwards, which is toward you. All the light colored backgrounds will turn away from you, or forwards. So the first six cards, two, four, six, will go forwards two backwards, two forwards, four backwards, and then the two border cards forwards. So we'll separate those out and turn them in those directions. Turn again, because like so many of these skip hole patterns, Everything happens in pairs. Row three, four forward, two back, two forward, two back, two forward, and two back. Turn them in those directions. Beat firmly. Pull your loop through. Leave a loop behind. Pull the loop through, leave the loop behind. I like using a ruler to follow along so I can keep track of which row I'm on. Two forward, 
two back, four forward, four back, and the rest forward. It's very satisfying after just a few turns of the cards, you already start to see the pattern emerge on your weaving. Next row, row seven, eight forward, and six back. And repeat. Also known as pick number 11, two forward, two, four, six, eight back, and the rest forward. Thirteen. Everything's the same except the third and fourth cards. Mm -hmm. Pick 15, two forward, two back, two forward, four back. Twist above the top peg here. And pick number 17. Two forward, four back. Two forward, two back. And the rest forward.
And you'll continue on in this method until you reach the end of the repeat, which is the top of the second column. Let's see how long it takes me, shall we? What's this? Do, 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 do. Please talk amongst yourselves for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> 